So let me just show you um, on my phone here. Let's see. See that okay? Mm -hmm. What I'm using is um, a little emulator. And let's see if the page is still up. It is. Okay. So what I want to do is on this website. This is a website inside a browser. It's not fully optimized for the browser. It's not resizing itself properly. But I can still do some basic functionality. One thing I want to do is just I want to search my zip code. So I'm going to put in Troy zip code for 10 mile radius. I hit go. It's a little pixelated on the projector. But you, you, you start to see the web page comes up, and we can kind of take a look at some, some things here. If I uh, zoom in, it'll give us different geocaches based on, and you can also say, from where I'm at now, what's the closest geocaches? And it'll give you a list. Um, I wanted to check out this pot of gold. I don't know what that is. So I, I can click on it. Ooh, what's, what happened? Let's see. It's asking me, do I want to open this up in a browser, or do I want to open this up in the, the CGEO, which is a application. So we're blurring the line. It's not 100% a web page experience. I can stay in the web page, or I can use this, this little mini application. So I'll choose to use the application. Now it's going to load the application. Now one of the things I might run into problems here is uh, I can't get a, a, a GPS location. But uh, I did cache this pot of gold, but you can see what the interface looks like. It tells me how, how far away it is, uh, how hard it is. They'll give you a description. They'll give you little things, and you can set waypoints. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff uh, you can do with this. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and when I installed this application, one of the things that asked me said, you know, you're installing this application. There's another application that works really well with it. It's called Radar. I don't know what that is, but I'll say yes. So I said yes. And I'm glad I did because it really does work well together. So if I go under the options button, which you won't be able to see when you click, but you should be able to see the little thing pop up at the bottom, there's several things. I can turn on compass, which is kind of neat. I can um, I can do I can log the visit when I find it right from my phone, or I can go to navigate and it gives me options like do I want to use that radar application? Do I want to show it on a map? Do At the bottom it says turn by turn direction, which turns on the navigator, which is, uses a lot of Google Maps navigation capabilities. It's like we're turn for turn. If you go to a Google website and go to Maps and find directions to something and do it on your phone, it matches exactly the same. Um, so they do you know, a good tie in there. Uh, what I want to choose is the radar. Let me just show you that. So now I'm using another application that's baked in to an application I installed. So I just find that they kind of all play well together. If it could find my geo, if it could find my latitude longitude right now, um, we would be in the center, and then it would show the uh, around the circles how many miles away and how many yards away it is, and then it would show a dot where the cache is, allow you to hone in on that, like you're you know on a fire plane and you're trying to attack somebody. But um, it's, it's a neat little application. And this ability to, to go from the web experience, which is readily available, there's no commitment, you just go to a website on your phone, get some information. Maybe there's an interaction where it jumps into an application that makes sense. And then maybe there's an application that's embedded in the application that really helps the experience. Well, as, as a Flex developer, what, what I've been using for a few years is this Air product. Um, which Adobe put out and allows me to take my applications that have been put in web browsers for, for years and put them on a desktop. Well, they've now re-optimized the whole Air product and now I can install Air on these devices. And then my applications that I've written can now be living inside this Air application. So there's this ability to rack and stack. So let me show you um, is, is it 1027? So I'm running late. Okay, but I'm the whole thing comes. So. so we've got a little bit more time. Right. Make it, so. Well, I can do this pretty quick. But let me show you um, the process to put something on the phone. So we'll leave the, the, the radar up there. Actually, I'll, I'll just kill that.
Okay. And let me go ahead and, and create a new project. So I'll say file new. And what this is, this is an Eclipse, and I'm using a plugin. Um, it's called Flash Builder. Um, and it's it's not even really out of the market yet. It's called Burrito. It's in the uh, alpha state or beta state, beta test. And I'm going to go to this Flex Mobile Project. And it's going to ask me some questions. I'll call it the uh, Web Masters uh, Group. And it just so happens it's going to put, put it in, it could be really in any directory, but it's going to be under a web root. I can choose different um, SDKs. It's kind of like Java, you can put in different SDKs. But I'm going to use the what's called the Hero SDK, which is fully optimized for um, for mobile devices, okay? And um, you mentioned earlier that you, know, you, you run into problems with flash not performing correctly. And I, I am, I'm with you. And there's a lot of bad things you can do with flash. Uh, you know, those, those flash screens gave flash a bad name, you know, the skip intro. Um, uh, but it's really evolved now. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of agencies using it. We're using it for some high-powered applications. We're, we just can't do it. Even with the latest Ajax and HTML and HTML, we just can't. We pushed beyond those barriers, and we're now using Flash to solve some of these problems. Um, so to be able to bring some of that to the phone is, is, is was intriguing to me. So the next step is asking me what are my targets right now. The only target I can target is the Android phone, but BlackBerry is coming soon. When they release the product, the BlackBerry device will be available as well as the BlackBerry Playbook, which is a tablet, which really looked cool. As a matter of fact, I think I got a little bit more information about the tablet right here. That's what the tablet looks like. And if you're a BlackBerry group, which a lot of agencies do have BlackBerries, um, these tablets will work well with your BlackBerry phone. So you won't have to get another phone uh, number that runs your data plan your, your digital phone, your phone and your tablet will work together wirelessly to securely get access to all the things you do on your BlackBerry now, but you'll have it on your tablet. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff they're uh, coming up with on this tablet. And the, the native way of developing apps for the BlackBerry is Adobe Air. So then I said, all right, they just went up a notch in my, my, my mind of which tool I'm going to use to develop. Uh, like I said, I have not sold yet, but um, still think that there's uh, different technologies will be used obviously for the website, uh, web page, mobile sites, and then for different uh, applications. Next week, there, down in New York City, uh, I've got invitations that I could give you to go to this event. If you're a big Blackberry shop, it's an all day event um, on the 8th, and um, come see me and I can get you an invitation to this. I imagine anybody could get it, but they sent it to me uh, as a user group manager. And um, there's a management track and there's a developer track. So if you've got managers who are trying to decide about this, uh, maybe they can go. Um, so, all right. Also, the Apple iOS uh, will be available. We'll be able to, we're not going to necessarily deploy Flash on the iPhone. We know, if you know the history and what's going on there. Um, but there's a cross compiler that they've got that will allow us to develop and deploy as a native iPhone app. So that's, uh, that, that's been out, available. There's a lot of limitations to it. The next version, when they release, hopefully in the next month, will have a lot of that wired down. So, and it'll be just an option here. And maybe, maybe you can multi, hopefully you can multi-select that it's not a radio button, that you notice it's a checkbox. So I can say, I want to deploy to all these devices. And uh, automatic rotation, we'll take that. They do a lot of stuff for you to make this thing easier. If you have different server technologies, you can choose that here. So if you're uh, .NET, ProFusion, J2E, PHP, whatever your back end is, it'll bake that into the app and allow you to readily access back end services. We're just going to say nothing for now. And I'm just going to hit finish. So let's see what it created for us. One of the first things it created was, it was a project. And it created this um, this main app, and there's a tag here. It's, it's all XML declarative language, and um, it's very simple. There's not much to it. But one of the things I want to show you is this first view. The first view 
it creates, so this is the wrapper for the whole application where you would do things like set a style sheet, uh, set up any security, those type of things. And then they divide it to the point where now we've got a directory with all of our views in it. And our first view in the view directory is the home view. And there's not much on that at all. There's a title. Let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go under my run configuration. Run configuration. And it's going to want to know. Um, all right, that's the wrong project, so I need to create a new one. I'll just hit this plus sign. And there's webmasters. And it's an Android target. I'm going to run it on my desktop, and I can choose what kind of phone I want to deploy it to. But what I've got here is a Droid X, so let's emulate onto a Droid X. And I'll hit Run. And I'll just bring back the screencast application. Uh, and look how fast that came up. There's, not, there's no interaction. There's, there's nothing there. But they created a pretty well-formed little app. Uh, you can't really see the gradients all that well on the screen, but it's there. And um, it gives you a starting point within minutes. Of, there's, there's not a lot of configuration. You plug in your phone, and it just works. Okay. Um, let me actually show you on, on the phone itself, because this is just an emulator, right? And um, let me just double check that my screencast is up. There it is. So that's an actual camera showing the, the phone. And what I'll do this time is when I run it, I'm going to say run it on my device. And that's all I have to say is hit run. And it takes just a little bit longer because it's got to actually install that on the phone. The phone will go blank, and it'll just launch the application after that. There is a mini splash screen you can put up that comes up very quickly. Gives you a place to put some, some helpful information. Oh, man, I didn't change back. Okay, there it is. Sorry about that. I can do that again. The second time, it runs even faster. So it'll go blank, installs the app, and then launches it. So you, the app could already be running. There it is. <coughs> 